Turns out this uh, Julio Jones guy is making a few headlines here. Uh, um, wondering if you could talk just a little bit about what he brings to your group um, you know, on the field uh, and off and, and uh, you know, what's your impressions have been uh, over the years uh, watching him as well? I think, well, without question, I think his, uh, his resume kind of speaks for itself. Uh, he's uh, had a great uh, career thus far, uh, and I'm quite sure it's something he plans on continuing. Uh, in terms of what he brings to the team, uh, he brings a guy, he brings, you know, a, a, a player that, that, has made big plays, played in big game situations, um, bring size, speed, range, uh, all the things you want um, in a playmaker. Uh, Terry? Uh, Coach, when you bring in a guy like Julio Jones, obviously he has Hall of Fame type credentials. How much do you, as his coach, kind of, let him set his own example and then maybe show some of those younger guys, that, hey, if you want an example of how things are supposed to be done, watch what this guy's doing. Um, you know, I think, you know, being at what he's done already and, um, you know, thus far in his career, you know, he's earned the right to, um, you know, to kind of you know, have some say in terms of how he does things. Um, and I think, you know, in the conversations I've had with him, um, and there haven't been very many yet. Um, but uh, we've kind of talked about that a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, how he'll progress through this, the rest of this mini camp and into training camp and, and uh, how he'll get, you know, how we'll prepare him, you know, as we move forward with the, with the regular season. But, um, you know, I think it'll be a, a, a kind of an open conversation. You know, I'll give him some thoughts that I have and, and, and we'll come to a, uh, resolution from there. Uh, Joe Rexrod. I'm just wondering if on that day, uh, you know, that first day last week, just having him up close and actually coaching him, if there was anything you saw that maybe you hadn't seen as much from afar, anything that you said, oh, wow, I didn't realize that about about his game or his skill set. Oh, I think the thing that jumps right out you, right out you is his length, his size, um, you know, the, the, the power that he has, he, you know, he, he has some explosiveness, uh, his ability to be able to snap down out of the break, uh, for a guy that's, you know, long and, and, and uh, you know, has really good body control. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's pretty easy to put uh, two and two together and, and realize uh, why this guy has been a great player for so long. Uh, Jim Wyatt. And, and Rob, what was he kind of like coming in the door? He obviously didn't have to be here for, for last week's OTA, and it seemed like when he was out on the practice field, he was already trying to give pointers to maybe some of the young guys. Uh, had you heard that's kind of what he's all about, and what were your kind of first impressions of him just just right out of the gate, even even though you knew him? Um, you know what? I, I, I try not to have any first impressions, just kind of, you know, wanted to see kind of who walked through the door and, uh, I was uh, really impressed. You know, he was eager to he was eager to, to get started. Um, you know, wants to know you know what our culture is and how we do things, and uh, he's looking forward to being a part of that. Uh, Teresa, Rob, having him on the field also, it looked like he was maybe giving some tips to some of the younger receivers as well. Having him in that group, how much does that experience kind of as a peer coach almost kind of bleed over into the rest of that group and particularly the, the effect he might end up having on AJ as well? Uh, I think anytime you have uh, someone that, that can execute uh, the advice that he's given always helps. You know, anytime you have a guy that you can point to and say, this is the way you do it. Um, you know, a lot of times for young players, um, it, it comes down to being able to see it so that you can emulate it, so that you can copy it, so that you kind of know what it feels like. But anytime you can see a picture of it, um, a lot of times it helps shorten that learning curve. Uh, Emily Proff. Yeah, Coach Dews uh, was telling us just how blessed he feels to, to get to coach a guy like Derrick Henry. I'm curious, just from a personal standpoint, as a coach, when you find out a guy like Julio Jones is, is coming into your room and is a guy that you get to coach, what's your reaction um, to getting to get your hands on this guy? Um, 
you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to uh, the opportunity to to be able to step on the field with somebody like that. And, and, um, and you understand the problems that it causes defenses. You know, I think at the end of the day, that's what it boils down for me is, you know, you know how do we best um, utilize, you know, Julio's skill sets and, and, and everything that he brings and, um, you know, to get him and AJ on the field at the same time, uh, it's going it's going to be, uh, it's going to cause some opposing defenses. Uh, they have some some decisions to make. Um, and then you add Derrick Henry in the mix and some of these other guys that are emerging offensively. Uh, that's probably the thing that I'm looking forward to it to, uh, the most is uh, just seeing how it looks on Sunday, man, when it counts. Uh, Teron? Coach Rob, as far as like, you know, developing that chemistry, uh, you went from one team to another and had to restart the chemistry with a quarterback. What do you think is going to be the critical thing or things for Julio Jones to get that with, uh, with Ryan Tannehill? Because it's obviously so critical. Well, I think it's going to be time together. You know, it's going to be not just on the practice field, but, you know, in the meetings, you know. Uh, Ryan does a great job of communicating really what he wants from these guys. And uh, I'm quite sure that he and Julio will, will establish that kind of relationship where it's kind of seamless as when you're on the field because you think alike. And um, but really, the, the bottom line is, is this time with your quarterback and in, in that communication. I always joke with you about your tandem with Frank Sanders and, you know, how, how I really like to watch you guys. So. You look at uh, A.J. Brown and, and, and Julio Jones, that tandem, how much does, you know, having each other there to be 1A, 1B, or, or whatever the situation is, how much does that help them both itself? Oh, I, I think, you know, I, I think they'll help each other out a great deal. Uh, but it's, at, at the end of the day, uh, it's really about getting both of them guys to play at an extremely high level, um, you know, so that we can, um, you know, so we can take advantage of some of those opportunities. Uh, but I think they should, you know, if, you know, we develop and, and we continue to put the work in that's going to be necessary. Um, you know, I think they could be a formidable uh, tandem uh, throughout this league. Uh, John Glenn. Rob, uh, about the, the wide receiver room in general with the addition of Julio, I mean, I wonder if you could talk about the, uh, the difference in, in kind of size that this room has now. You know, if you've been around a group, you know, depth-wise with this much size overall, and if that provides any advantages for the team. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when you look at the dynamics, <laughs> the size of our room, you know, when you got, uh, you know, Julio is 6'3", 225, AJ at, at you know, 6'1 and a half, 230. Uh, you got Racy McMathews, I don't know, 6'3", 6'4", he's 230. You got Nick. Um, Westbrook, who's 6'3", 220, um, Cody Hollister, he's up there. I mean, so when you look at the dynamics of our room, um, it certainly has to be one of the bigger receiving uh, groups in the NFL. Um, but that, at the end of the day, it, it really comes down to us being able to impose our will on defenders and, and use that size, um, you know, in the run game and the contested catch world and, 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 and using it to our advantage and not just showing up and expecting people to uh, uh, be impressed by our size, if you would. Well, I know you've been around a lot of rooms. Can you recall a group with, you know, this much size in, in general? Uh, you know, I cannot, to be honest with you. Um, I, I cannot. This is certainly the, uh, the biggest group that I've ever had. Um, so I, I, I cannot uh, uh, mention a, another group that will, ri will rival this. Uh, a couple more, uh, Joe Rusha. Yeah, Rob, I just wonder what your impressions are so far of Josh and, you know, how is his role impacted now with, with Julio Jones coming in, but also what kind of opportunities might he have because of that, you know, that tandem? Um, you know, I, 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 he's done a great job of coming in and, and, and really immersing himself in the playbook, but he hasn't been able to go full speed for us. And some of the, uh, you know, some of the team drills, uh, he's been a lot of in, into a lot of the job throughs. Um, but I can tell you that uh, he's done a great job really establishing himself in terms of um, being multifaceted. You know, uh, he has a pretty good grasp of, of the X, F, and Z position. So um, it should give him an opportunity to be extremely versatile for us. Um, and that's something we're going to be looking, uh, looking to him uh, to uh, provide for us. 
Uh, Teron? Yeah, Marcus Johnson is a guy that I, I've, I've watched a lot of. He, he's a pretty consistent player. Well, what are your thoughts on him and kind of the, the different flavor or season that he brings to the group? Marcus has done a, a solid job, man, um, especially in the past couple of weeks. He's uh, uh, gotten himself in shape, and uh, you can see it starting to show up out on the practice field. Um, and he's also a guy that's got some versatility to him in terms of, you know, being able to be able to move around and play at a high level or whatever position we put him at. So uh, I would agree. Uh, he's done some nice things uh, throughout this camp. Uh, Terry? Coach, blocking is such a big emphasis here uh, among the wide receiver group. And the last couple of years, Corey Davis had kind of been the leader of that group in terms of blocks and skills. Who's wearing that uh, best blocker crown right now in that receiver room? Well, hopefully all of us are going to wear the crown. At least that's going to be my, uh, you know, that's going to be my speech at the opening of the training camp is it's going to start with the run game. All those guys understand that. I think the great thing about uh, having Julio here is uh, if you look at his track record over the years, he's been one of the better blockers uh, throughout this league in terms of uh, willing to do the dirty work and, um, and, and being a star war in the passing game. So I think this, is, this isn't something that's foreign to him. Um, and AJ, you know, has the play strength and has demonstrated um, that he has the ability to be a good uh, run blocker. We, he just has to do with some more consistency. So, um, you know, we certainly, um, you know, with the size we have in our room uh, and the length um, should, you know, be able to um, withstand the loss of Corey. Coach, I got one last one before you go. You've had a history of working with some pretty big receivers in terms of Watkins and Cooper and AJ and now Julio. Is there anything special that you have to do with those guys in terms of coaching them differently than, than a regular receiver? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, traditionally with bigger receivers, um, you know, your margin for error is a lot slimmer in terms of the transition phase of it because they're so long. Uh, and they and they the picture that they give the DB if if they're not disciplined with their pad level and things like that, uh, you get against some of these better corners who can read body language and read posture and those other things. Uh, you can tip your hand a lot, so uh, it's vital uh, that those guys are consistent with their pad level and what they present to DBs from week to week.